Capitol Hill is a neighborhood in flux, as the familiar signs of gentrification take over the spaces that once housed Seattle's gay community. In the 60s, 70s, the bars were down in Pioneer Square. Then they moved up to Uptown, to Howell Gulch, and the Regrade. And then they started moving up the hill. Real estate on the hill was cheap. The Boeing bust. In the 1970s and 80s, working class families moved off Capitol Hill in droves. Gay bars moved in, and with gays becoming more accepted in public life, an enclave formed on Capitol Hill. Brass Connection as a dance bar, and then Neighbors opened up in 83. So you had a center right there, because you'd go dancing from one bar to another. Was... And there was a lot of gay businesses. Mm -hmm. I mean, even there were more bathhouses and things then, so it was very, it's just very was... queer then. Our house and the house next to us were always both queer houses. You knew people down the block, people in the apartment building across the street. People that worked here lived here, which doesn't... A lot of people yeah. that worked here lived here. So it was neighborhoody. And it made a very tight community, I think, at that point. The gay enclave remained strong in the 80s and 90s, but around the early 2000s is when residents started to feel the shift. In today's Capitol Hill, a new generation is embracing the term queer instead of sticking with the more rigidly defined gay. It's at once a more radical identity and also a more inclusive one. Queer Bar is a safe space, first and foremost, for any and all people that fall under the LGBTQIA umbrella. We've not even been open two months. Queer, the Q, in the LGBTQIA umbrella, it's the only one that's all-encompassing. And we wanted it to be a very obvious place. So the community really does understand, like, this is a gay bar. This is a lesbian bar. This is a trans, this is everybody. But inviting in a wider community is not without its challenges. The tech industry has like exploded, which is wonderful, but it also means we get a flood of people that don't know and don't remember what Seattle, or Capitol Hill specifically, used to be like. Another big issue is housing as prices climb and mom and pop landlords give way to corporate real estate firms. So it creates a sort of sense that this place is not really community focused um, and loses sort of that sense of person to person familiarity. And so I feel like it maintains this sort of historic tie, but people are not living and being as much in community on the hill as they used to be. I lived in a house for 18 years that was is now, there's townhouses there. Here's my corner. The garden was over here in the front, and then the chickens were over here at the edge. The landlord's partner was diagnosed with early stages of Parkinson's. So Steve and Joe decided to sell the properties, and I understand the reasoning, I, I, I miss having the house. People have been moving off the hill. We used to joke that you found someone and became a couple, you moved to Queen Anne. Wallingford was lesbian. Wallingford and West Seattle. Nowadays, everywhere. We truly are everywhere. You can't afford to live on the hill anymore. Nathan Adams and his husband moved to White Center in 2012, and shortly thereafter decided to pursue their dream of opening a gay bar. We looked in Soto, we looked in, we did look on the hill, and finally we did settle on White Center, and the whole reason why was because so much of the community has moved south that there's not a place for everybody to gather and just be themselves. The World Rink, right back here, they do Gay Skate the first Wednesday of every month. And it's huge. They're always packed, they always sell out. It's a truly diverse population. I think that's what makes Rat City, White Center, the next sort of, I don't wanna say gayborhood, but it's, it's, it's developing its own identity. The queer neighborhood that we have has some serious problems, mostly economic problems, who it's accessible for, who can afford to live here. But I think the idea of having queer geographies um, is still really vital and important for all of the reasons that um, to build political power, we need to be able to interact and see each other and be in places and spaces where we have a sense of solidarity and we have a sense of community. When there's like more of a diaspora and that like people are moving out into more suburban spaces, 
I think it diminishes the sense of political power and the sense of safety. Despite all the changes, Capitol Hill is still the center of gay life in Seattle and still serves an important role for gay people in the region. So many people, both of us know most of our friends that this is a special place for them, the, the hill and this area. It's the fun of being able to go into Pony, have a couple drinks, see all your friends, then walk down to Diesel and see some other friends you hadn't seen in a while. It's seeing the community live as a community. And I think that's really hard to explain to someone who's not gay because you take it for granted when you see your neighbors going jogging in the mornings or walking their dogs. You take all that for, oh, that's just, that's the neighborhood. That's just the way life is. Well, when you're gay, that's not the way life is. So the neighborhood becomes that. That's what Capitol Hill was for me when I came out. So it's important. In Close on KCTS 9 is made possible in part by BECU.